We do have the birth of this baby, incidentally. Can you this imagine? We've got two mothers standing there. Oh, well, one mother is reclined. Yeah, I'm laying yes. there. <laughs> yes. All right, here's how you do this. Watch this. This is interesting. You're on. Dr. Sherry, your monitor's up there. Oh, this is... Well, what you're seeing there is uh, someone looking through a microscope examining eggs in a Petri dish. And if you look at that video on the video, you'll see a little round structure, usually about the size of a grain of sand with uh, a sunburst around it. That's the egg. That's the egg unfertilized. Yes, and that's Here the Here come the boys. And you'll see our... <laughs> that's the egg with a sperm attached to the little shell around it. And there's a woman about to get the embryos, the fertilized eggs, transferred to her uterus in a painless procedure which takes a few minutes only. Why but, is she on her tummy? Now, this is a vaginal entry, yes. but she is on her tummy, and this is about gravity, isn't it? And it's because, yes, because the uterus is tipped forward in this case, and we want to use every bit of help we can get. And so right. she's tipped forward because her uterus is tipped forward, as is the case in two-thirds of women. Right. Uh, so this, in, uh, this would be uh, Kathy. Uh, in but she was no, on my back. No, I was on my back. <laughs> you were on your back. Yeah. Her uterus was tipped backwards, so she's... Oh, uh, <laughs> yeah. Well, there you are. you got a backward-tipped uterus, and all you've had is five children, so we're not going to worry about you. I could tell walking down the street. There you are. There's a woman with a... Backward-tipped uterus. <laughs> So now, wait a minute. When you get when you get the fertilized egg inserted, you have to lay there with no movement at all. Is this right? Yes, I listened to my journey tapes for two hours. You mean what? Like what is that music? Uh, In my music by the group Journey. Two hours. I mean, the, you can only move your eyes, huh? Well, I was yes. And then, if you want to move your head, is do I understand you have to have help to do it? Or you, the idea is not to. Rattle the baby basket. The idea is not to increase the pressure in the abdominal cavity by either talking, moving, or anything. But it may well be anecdotal. There's some people in some clinics that don't do that, and the results are really not that. I see. So it's we don't know. You, you're just taking the safe road. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. And it works. It's worked nearly Stillness. A Stillness yeah. for two hours. It's worked uh, nearly a thousand times for us already, with coming uh -huh. up for a thousand birth. Okay. Uh, can we show it now, or do you want to wait to show the birth of the baby? Home? Videotape of the baby? Let's Jim do it. Jim and Linda were there the whole time with us. With uh, you, uh, in other words, we were all in four of you then were yes. in, the, in the delivery room? Yes. There was Very a dry exciting. eye in the But house. not the egg uh, donor. No, right. Annie came the next day. Okay. Yeah. So here you are, and the voice I think we're going to hear is yours. Well, yeah, it usually is. So you're, <laughs> so you're standing there, you're standing there during this C-section. Uh-huh. Next watching your baby be being born. Yeah, it was And great. the same is true of Jim, your husband. Right? Yeah. All right, roll this then. Here, here we go. Uh, this is what's a good job, Kathy. Good job, Kathy. That's Linda's voice saying, "Kathy, do your stuff." Oh gosh, Kathy. Oh gosh, Kathy. I'm Remember this: what they've been through to have this baby. <laughs> yourself a son. There's the cry. Wow. Isn't that nice? Tell you, talk about a wanted baby. <laughs> Holy cow, this child will be loved forever. And no doubt, a future Nobel Prize winner or President of the United States, whatever may be his. Water what? Water Already water we got water. questions. I got a break here. What is it? <laughs> What's going to happen to the baby when he grows up? What, how, what are you going to tell him? Where's everything. the identity coming from? Absolutely it's everything. Bad enough, it's bad enough people who are adopted have uh, problems with identity. No, we have kept. We've kept a record ever since we started getting involved with this. He has a huge scrapbook. And I think this is one child who's going to know that it's not a case where someone had to abandon him. It's not a case where someone had to give him away. He was very, very much wanted by the entire family of both communities. Everybody yep. wants him. Let's just go over this once again. <laughs> One of the questions also is how our kids are going to handle it, being that... Uh, sure, they saw mommy carry right. this baby for nine months. Right. You have four kids ranging in age from... Nine. Uh, nine to three. Nine to three. And mommy's pregnant, but mommy's not going to keep the baby. 
uh, because this is Aunt Linda's baby right. and Uncle Jim's baby. And this was Cousin It. Cousin what? Cousin, Cousin It. it. Cousin for it. nine months, they would call the baby Cousin It. Our kids, our kids named it Cousin It. Because we didn't know if it was a girl or a boy until the very last minute. Sure, no, that's right. fine. You don't see any protest here. <laughs> you, know, uh, you know, Phillips, having seen many couples like this, it always strikes me that, you know, to be judgmental about people who make decisions like this is very difficult because you can never imagine the amount of hurts and angst that people go through wanting to have a baby. You know, you can only put yourself in that position if you're in their position. And ultimately, look what they've got. They've got, really, a baby born in love. And we'll be back in just a moment. Can we show, Brian, let's do this next one. Here, here's the baby, uh, Linda and Jim, just minutes after the baby was born. Watch this, let's see the monitor. They put seven inside of her, and we were real happy we got the one. Yep, there you go. James Allen, Jr. Wow. Way to go, Cass. We gotta call Dr. Bad. <laughs> Is that Cap? Well, it's probably an hour after the baby. Look at that. Happy at last. You took a long time, Mom. Obviously, you're a very loving couple, and you really wanted to have a baby. And I think it's great that you're able to do this. But why was it so difficult to adopt a child? You said it took 10 years, and it still didn't come through. We've gone through a, a group of different um, avenues. We tried um, Catholic charities. We tried um, several independent adoptions. Um, the closest we came was the almost independent adoption that we um, we're that close to. And we're still trying we're to still adopt. We're still trying. We're number three on the list. Anybody out there? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's okay, does the baby act any differently, like, with you rather than, like, the Yeah, he knows I'm the mom. Does he? <laughs> oh, yeah. He lives with us. We're in Oregon. Yeah. And he doesn't see Kath and Ann. He's, he's our... They're godparents, though. Both Joe and Kath and Ann and my, her husband are the godparents. You know, I, doctor. Sorry, you know, in this day and age now with the very high success rates that women can have in terms of having a baby through what we refer to as third-party parenting, where one woman gives the egg and another woman ca uh, carries the child, and also with surrogacy, where in vitro fertilization is done as here with surrogacy, there's hardly really a need for couples to adopt. There are a few uh, exceptions, but let me make it clear, adoption's a very good option. It solves an infertility and a social problem. But the success rates, I mean, these women, if the eggs come from a woman under 35, the chance of having a baby are better than 50% every time they try. So uh, it turns out to be uh, a wonderful alternative for couples to have their own child in this way. Here is uh, Annie. Here is the egg donor uh, who was uh, not, uh, is not with us, but I just want you to see. This is... Uh, My wonderful sister. This is your Rosemary's... I'm sorry. This is Linda's older sister. There, look at you, they're, uh, well, you sure are sisters. Uh, that's your egg there, sis. Beautiful, beautiful baby. Are you there, caller, you wanted to ask? Yes, I am there. First of all, I want to say congratulations. I'm so happy for you. Thank My you. husband and I tried to go through the same procedure, and we were stopped for financial reasons. Our insurance company would only go so far. My sister was going to be the donor, for, so I could carry my own child. However, again, insurance, the expense. We're yeah, very blessed. We were able to adopt a relative's child very soon after that. Yeah. But May did your insurance cover any of it? And what, how expensive uh, uh, yeah, was it? Yeah, if I could just, uh, just very briefly call mm -hmm. her. You have, uh, have you had a hysterect? Uh, no, I have not. I have premature ovarian failure. So you don't ovulate? No, I do not. All right, so your sister gets the egg. Yes. Uh, your husband's sperm, yes. in vitro, yes. and then you would carry the fertilized baby. Yes, sir. Uh, but that never transpired because of the cost. Exactly. What was the cost estimate to you? Um, approximately $15,000, and it was never 
we were never 100% sure that I would conceive. So um, you, you're right. And it just adoption, the person in the audience who asked about adoption, adoption is so difficult. People who have their own children never ever tell anyone that can't have their own, oh, you can always adopt, because it's not true. It's a very expensive avenue. Dr. Sher, comment. Phil, number one, in vitro fertilization works. There is no form of treatment of resistant infertility that has a higher success rate in a good clinic. Very good. You've made Second that point. point. Now talk to her about the cost. cost. Yeah, yes. the cost. It is expensive. And yes, insurance companies don't cover it. But some clinics are trying to address this issue of cost containment. Now, just to give you an example, if the success rate is high, it's possible to give people up to 18 months of care for a fee that you mentioned for one try, as we do in our program, simply because we're able to get good results and therefore risk share with couples. Right. Are you covered? Is the, is the patient covered? Insurance-wise? Yes. In this country, in, not for ovum donation. And so a round number then for this 18-month treatment, $15, presuming... $15,000. One five? For maybe four tries in our setting would be about $15,000, excluding, of course, if they were to use a donor from an, that they didn't know, an anonymous donor that they might have to bring along. Very good. Or you from an agency. What? Discover, Visa, MasterCard. You actually then... He's really on use time. Your plastic, He's on time. Because we were running out of time for the agent yeah. and the mother and the donor and everything. We were yeah. running out of time. People were getting older. Right. So and when she said she time. was dilating and that the contractions were two minutes yeah. apart, Jim went to the ATM machine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, but you did it. So you probably still owe money then, We still you? owe money on this. But the, as far as from the birth on, um, insurance companies take care of anybody who's pregnant and getting ready to have a child. Right. And our insurance company in, Illinois, um, in Oregon, they are by law required to cover adopted children, and we legally have to adopt Jimmy. Now, i got to show you Linda leaving the hospital with the baby. <laughs> this is funny. <laughs> Linda is now leaving the hospital with a show him, Brian. I made this. He's in a pea pod. <laughs> Do you get it? <laughs> How happy you are. And we'll be back in just a minute. All right. Now clear your head. <laughs> All right, here are the highly regarded Rosemary and Paul Garvey. They, since 1985, had tried to have kids. What's the matter, Rosemary? Um, I should say, Rosemary, <laughs> what's the matter, Paul? I'm sorry, very sexist question. It uh, was me. It was? What's the my deal? My tubes were blocked. I had surgery on my tubes, but that didn't help. Um, then so you we, could make the eggs, but they didn't make their way down the... Well, uh, then I, um, I didn't make very many eggs, and um, they weren't any good. I, um, they'd give me a high dosage of the medication and I'd only make about three eggs and then maybe only two would fertilize and then they weren't very good embryos anyway and they wouldn't take. We tried six times with my own eggs. Okay, so you got your sister. Yeah. You called your sister, said, hey sis, give me I a couple of eggs. <laughs> uh, and did she, uh, your sister, let's see, Rosemary, uh, I'm sorry, you're free not to tell us. How old are you, Rosemary? Oh, all right, all right. All right. Well, it's fine. Well, you're I just had my she, birthday. So you're 30 something. She, yeah, no, all right, I'm fine. 40. You're just turned 40. You're 40. I'm last you're 40. 40. All right. Now, how old are your are your egg donating sisters? 28. 28. Uh huh. And is she married? Yes, she just. Now wait, I want to wait a minute. I got to wait. They're gonna get all confused. We're gonna meet her in just a moment. Just hang on a second. Because look at these live, irreplaceable, beautiful children <laughs> right on our stage here. Come on. Now, talk about peace on earth. Look at that. <laughs> They've obviously seen better programs than the Dodgers. <laughs> Holy cow. And they're how old? Um, almost nine weeks. Nine weeks. So, uh, nine week old, so now we take your husband, uh, Paul Sperm, uh -huh. in vitro, fertilizing the eggs of your sister. Uh -huh. And did it work the first time? No. Or the and second. so there you are, depressed and, oh, I'll never have any children. Uh. And then Money. what, the third time? The third time. Well, with Because we sister. had some frozen eggs. We did six, six times, times with my with eggs, and, and then work. three times with my sister's. Wow. So we spent close to 100000 Hundred thousand bucks. 
Well, what'd you do? Hit a lotto number got. or what? No. No. Leverage. Uh, leverage. You, you had leverage. coverage? Leverage. 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 Uh, um, so then you went, of course, uh, let me see. Now, you she, you carried the babies. Yes. The, uh -huh. the fertilized eggs were put in your in womb, yeah. and you carried the babies. So she had her babies using the eggs of her sister. And guess who's on the satellite from Florida? Rosemary's devoted sister, Patty. <laughs> Patty? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes, I hear you. Now, don't give me a long story about this baby. How did, how, what is, how old is the baby you're holding? She's a little over 48 hours. And is this a regular baby that you had in the regular way? Oh, yes. Well, what I a mean... boring story that is. <laughs> Compared to what you have, yes. Yes. Now, you you have not seen your sister's baby. No, and she hasn't seen no. all pictures only. Yeah. yeah. Does she have picture? Does she have picture going back to Florida? Can you see us? Yeah, yeah I do. I uh, see you. You see saw the baby. You saw the twins then. Yeah, I see the twins. This is neat, isn't it? Yeah, it's great. Tell your cameraman you want to get your baby back on TV. Oh, he wants he wants the baby back on TV. <laughs> uh, what is your baby's name, Patty? Jessica. The cat. Oh. And Jessica is 48 hours. She looks like old. Shannon. And she, yeah, now let me see. Jessica is then a half-sister uh -huh. of your babies. Yes. And uh, your babies, Shannon and Luke. Luke, Shannon. Luke, Shannon. <laughs> boy, girl. Boy, girl. So we have a boy and a girl who are a half-sister and a half-brother of Jessica, who arrived on a planet Earth 48 hours ago. Right. What a great deal. And neither... <laughs> and it was, it was Patty's eggs implanted into her sister Rosemary that allowed her to have twins. And now Patty decides, hey, she gets that baby feeling. And here she is with Jessica. What a beautiful child you have. How proud you must be. That's her second. She has a little boy also. <laughs> Were you always tight with your sister? I mean, did you guys ever fight her? I mean, how, you know, I mean, this is a, what kind of There's phone call is this? There's in our family. <laughs> Ten, five girls and five boys, and we're all very close. Uh -huh. And how did the issue of your sister providing eggs, because your eggs weren't doing it, arise? I mean, you, you, you make a phone call? How do you do that? I told my mom, and then Patty volunteered that I needed eggs, and then Patty We found it hard to it. ask her directly. We go I, through her I, mother. I found out, I found out that, that they wanted uh, me to donate after I, I was pregnant with my first son. And... Um, I, I told them that I would be more than happy that happy to donate after I had my son. You must have been real shook when your eggs weren't doing the job. Yeah, it was. That's it depressing. Was hard. Yeah. See, we were um, the drugs that we had to use. We were using the maximum amount allowable, what ten amps of uh, mm -hmm. pergonol, and that. Well, and you I had lots like of eggs, three. but the eggs weren't taking. No, I only made three eggs. Our hormone levels were like up here. And then Patty, that she only had like three amps. <laughs> what is this laughter about? <laughs> he was saying I was very crabby. <laughs> well, wait a minute. Uh, hey, we're on TV here now. Don't yeah. leave me now. That's that's Luke. That's Luke. <laughs> hey, Luke is a dude, boy. I'll tell you. Luke, you're going to knock him out. Look, he just got off the ski slopes, Luke. Uh, we'll be back to let this audience make an inquiry of these uh, very happy families in just a moment. I think it's wonderful. I have a twin sister. We come from a family of ten. We're married to brothers. If I had to do it for her, I would too. Uh, we're the twin. And there's ten of us in the family yeah. too. So the next time you decide whether you want to have a baby, you got to have a family meeting. Yeah. Um, this is for I guess Kathy. Yes. yes. Um, I was just wondering if there's any any time when you were pregnant that for a second you well, you wanted to keep it yeah. or. Oh, no, I now? have four, and I'm as happy as can be with them. <laughs> Linda did call up a couple yeah. times, and she just wanted to reassure, you know, 
can't you know, Phil, in most cases, uh, it's usually an anonymous donor or an, a surrogate that's selected that is not a member of the family. These are exceptions, and we should see it in perspective. I mean, most of the cases are anonymous donors. And, and yes, and, and anonymous donors have certainly worked very well, mm. uh, as well as paid surrogate that uh, is correct. carriers. That is correct. Uh, but we should also say that this, th when you go to a stranger, however lovely may be the meeting and the mm. transfer of funds, mm. You do have lots of trap doors that could open on you. The mother doesn't want to surrender the baby. It's my baby. I didn't realize it was going to be this. I bonded with this baby. We've, had, we've done these shows. Here, it's all family, so it's the wonderful. difficulties yes, are less. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I was going to ask, did you make money off of that? Did, did they give you any for that? No, no nothing, I didn't. Nothing. Oh. If you see, could have seen the pictures, it was worth a million dollars being in the delivery room. Yes. Um, Joe, how do you feel now that the baby is gone? Like, um, we, we just, we were, uh, intense babysitting, and Kathy and I talked about doing this, uh, our, our son Michael, he's our, our youngest boy, but he's, uh, five, and we talked about having a baby for them five, six years ago, but we always, Kathy said, I'm not going to give my egg, and we just never knew where we were going to find an egg. Oh, uh, yes, this is for the family, number one, uh, would you do it all over again? You bet. Yeah, we would. It, we would never ask. <laughs> we, we, would, we would never. We would never ask them to do it. Kathy's We're... thought about doing it again, and there's just there's a lot of shots that you take. Um, a lot of shots. And my older sister is 38, and I don't. I think this is a once it's in not... a lifetime. That's why we're still trying to adopt. People yeah. just. It, it's just not a case of a, a simple procedure that's done in in a clinic, and that's it. I mean. The, my sister and my sister-in-law both had to go through a lot of pain and agony. 110 shots. 110 shots. A lot, lot, of, lot of shots every day. Every That's day. just Kathy. It's it's a lot of dedication. Oh, she had 110 it. shots for whom? For the egg producer? Oh, no, for, for you. For her. And yeah. my older sister In order to prepare 40. your womb to receive the, the fertilized egg. Is that the issue? And in order to keep the um, and, pregnancy. And keep it. For just yeah. keep, the, uh, keep it nice it and It got nourishing. to a point where I couldn't find... A, a spot he and didn't worry it was on her butt. She was yeah, her right. Right. The critical right. issue with success with this is to make sure that the lining of the uterus is prepared well. Very right. good. And, uh, and that's done uh, with, with hormonal injections. Uh, yeah. Patty, <clears throat> yes. uh, you must have then, your baby is 48 hours old. Yes. You are the younger, the youngest sister of, uh, of Rosemary. Yes. You then, uh, and, and Rosemary's babies are, are two... <laughs> <laughs> Rosemary's babies are three months old, two months, two yeah, months old. <clears throat> so eleven months ago, you got pregnant uh, uh, with with her eggs. Uh -huh. And then how much after the eleven? So you must have A two month months later. later got pregnant yourself, right. Patty. You're a pretty busy kid. <laughs> <laughs> it was a little bit of an accident, but um, we're happy with it. So yeah, she was pretty uh, fertile. <laughs> She's the, uh, she, uh, this is the Golden Ovary Award right here. Are, are you there, caller? You wanted to say. Hello? Yes. Hi. I, what Patty and, and uh, Rosie aren't saying is that when Rosie found out Patty was pregnant, she called her and said, are you mad at me? And Patty <laughs> said, only if it's twins. Who, who are you? I'm the oldest. Sean. I'm, I'm too old. They wouldn't take my eggs. They told me I was too old. You're so, too old. <laughs> so you are... You are Patty and Rosie's oldest sister. I'm the oldest of ten, right. And uh, w dare we ask you, your sister almost clobbered me for asking her how old she was. <laughs> Do you mind telling us? How old, who, how old she is? How old you are. <laughs> you don't want to say. Oh, I'll say I'm 44. And so your eggs then were they not all me together. They my eggs were too old. <laughs> yeah. So they took the babies. But, you know, we just had a 53-year-old grandmother give birth to the surrogate. Right. We, have a, we have a tape of that, as seen on the Today Show. Oh, we'll show you that in just right. a moment. Well, I you're all happy I'm about this, Sean, are you? I'm sorry? You're all happy about this. Oh, we are all so thrilled. <laughs> Isn't this neat? It's wonderful. It's but, wonderful. But you come from a family with five daughters and five sons. Exactly. So nobody could identify with Rosie's problem in our family. <laughs> uh, isn't this neat? Well, uh, you've seen your, uh, have you seen your, off, your, your yeah. what, are, what are they? They're your uh, my niece nephew. And nephew. Nephew and niece, nephew. yeah. And, and, my, and my other new niece, no, and I'm in Atlanta, and I won't see you until tomorrow morning. <laughs> can, you see, can you see the baby on your screen? Yeah. No, because I'm in Atlanta, and, and we're not... Oh, you're we not alive. You, I see. Right. We All see right. you tomorrow morning, we'll I see. Hope. All right. Well, wave, Jessica. Your aunt, is on, your aunt is on the line. There you go. Yes, I Sean, 
<laughs> Happy birthday, Rosie. Oh, oh thank you, Sean. <laughs> I'll never tell. <laughs> is today your birthday? It was Friday. Right. Friday. Oh, that, so that's why you were. This is the first time in your life you've had to answer <laughs> Big Quarrel. Oh, and we'll be back. No well, too bad, baby. <laughs> uh, uh, there are, there's a lot of folks around, including some in this audience, who would love to say they're 4 0. -oh. And we'll be back in just a moment. of Donahue, send three dollars to Journal Graphics, 1535 Grant Street, Denver, Colorado, 80203, or call 303-831-9000. To order a video cassette for only $24.95, just call 1-800-FOR-VIDEO. I do. Here's the piece on the Today Show. Margaret Larson uh, introducing the piece. A 53-year-old grandmother carries her daughter's baby. The daughter can make the eggs, the husband can make the sperm, but the daughter can't carry the baby. Ovaries, no baby basket. So, Mom decides to carry the baby for her daughter. I'm telling you, watch this. How one mother's love for her daughter meant producing her own grandchildren. Arlette Schweitzer made history this year when she volunteered to have her daughter's baby. Krista Yucatil was born without a uterus. Her mom agreed to be inseminated with sperm from her son-in-law and become a surrogate mother. On October 12th of this year, Arlette Schweitzer gave birth to twins, Chad and Chelsea. These are not my children. They're the biological children of Krista and Kevin. So I was just the incubator. So there, no, I didn't have any trouble at all because I'm certainly not their mother. I'm their grandmother. Hi. Um, I was just wondering, it's very wonderful to see your, your family and how close you are, but I was wondering if there are, like, legal documents that you can fill out to prevent... Very good question. Very good question. What do you have to do? We had a very big legal document that was drawn up before we ever got involved in this, and it discussed things like life insurance policies right. for the two people. But didn't somebody have to adopt? Yes. We, we have do. to adopt have our to baby adopt. because of the state of Illinois' law that the birth mother is the one who's listed as the mother, and whoever she's legally married to at the time is listed as the birth father. So I had to sign as the birth, as the birth father. Birth father. Yeah. What was the reaction of some of the other people when you told them what you were doing? Both communities think it is just incredible. The ladies at our bank just won't shut up about it. <laughs> yeah. um, do both families plan to have any more children? Through adoption. We're still trying to adopt. Through adoption. We have, have five a, frozen embryos. So I have a question use. for the doctor. What yeah. is the relationship between the carrier and the baby? Is it is she simply the incubator, or is there genetically any tie? In this case, it would be Linda. Kathy would in, be the carrier. Yeah. In in both cases, the carrier is different to the. It does not carry the the genetic imprint of the child, and that's the only way in which we do this kind of third party parenting in our setting. Rosemary, how long have you been married? Um, six years. Oh, yeah? And, and we, it's we, the first time? Yeah, yeah. we, yeah. Oh, we yeah. tried and since, And you do uh, plan on having more? Yeah. Maybe one more. Yeah. Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> he wants <laughs> got enough sisters. They, <laughs> they, <laughs> no, not, not like that. <laughs> they still have embryos that we, are left over, yeah. which we, we have hope frozen. to, which we we have to put back for them later if they choose. I was just wondering if y'all went through any kind of family counseling yeah. to mentally prepare for this. <laughs> yes, um, Kathy had to go out to California uh, and meet with the... Uh, Malin, for a psychological, yeah. psychological, psychological right. counseling. And we'll be back in a moment. <laughs> this is the girl child. This is the girl child, uh, who is Shannon. There's her brother, Luke. They are boy and girl twins. And here is their half-sibling, Jessica, born 48 hours ago in Florida. Uh, proud mommy is uh, Patty. Rosemary's Patty. sister. Okay, I got it straight. You wanted to ask, yes. I just wanted to ask something oh, of Kathy. Baby. Kathy, did you experience any post-bottom blues, you know? Oh, no, just trying to get the weight off. <laughs> Kathy often said, she says, I sometimes feel bad that I don't feel bad. With the other children? Services provided and promotional fees paid by the following. 